Hey YouTubers, hope everybody's having a great weekend. Um, today I wanted to kind of go over uh, a question that I get a lot uh, through uh, suggestions and uh, through email and all that. Um, I've got a lot of people asking me uh, what conditions that I have in my planted tanks. Um, right now obviously we're not really looking at one of them. These are a couple of endlers I picked up about a week ago at our local pet shop. Um, by the way, if anybody knows exactly what uh, flavor <laughs> these endlers are, uh, shoot me a, a thing down below, comment below, because uh, first time for me keeping endlers. Um, anyway, um, back to what we were talking about. Uh, a lot of people are asking about what kind of water conditions I have. Um, in my tanks and uh, how I got my plants to grow so well. Well, we have very soft water here in uh, western South Carolina. Uh, most of our water comes out of the North Carolina mountains, part of the Appalachian uh, Ridge Line, and uh, you can't even get a reading on it in uh, regular aquarium test kits as far as GH or KH. Um, the TDS on it out of the tap is about 85, which is virtually uh, reverse osmosis water. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know you can get it down to zero through RO, but uh, 85 is like next to nothing. So um, what I'm going to do is walk you through, um, and we're going to do a couple of tests on the water in my three show tanks, and we'll take a look at the results. And um, best thing for you to do is find out what kind of water you got coming out of your tap and then work in the plants that you want from there. So uh, let's get started. testing procedures, at least a couple of them. Um, it's a little early in the morning, so neither of the tanks have their lights on. Um, this particular tank, I do have an Apex, so I'm going to go ahead on, and on, okay, so, um, for those of you who don't know it yet, um, I've been sitting here watching uh, uh, the big gathering of uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op and uh, uh, sash uh, Sashimi Whiskey, uh, who does his uh, audio work and also is into fish, and L.R. Bretz, uh, who also raises and sells fish and, sh and shrimp and um i believe it's robert um who is also known as lup diesel and he owns flip aquatics who also deals in raising and selling of shrimp description hey, all right this is one of their get-togethers uh, a couple of months ago and i felt inspired to do this so um at any rate, um, I am a member of the uh, SCAA, which is the South Carolina Aquatics Association. It's our local fish club. And this is one of the uh, Apogee, I think it's a 200 uh, par meter. And uh, I asked our president, and he allowed me to borrow this thing. So for kicks and giggles I'm going to show you how to do a par reading and go 
ahead and open this thing up. Um, oh, by the way, the way my system works is I got the two dual uh, high output fluorescents, and uh, what, usually when they're off, this light comes on, so it gives a nice little kind of a moonlight effect for the tank. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I don't know if you all going to be able to read this, but I'm going to go ahead and do a PAR reading here. Let's see what kind of PAR I'm getting out of this tank. And let's see if I can get this in the light here. Okay, so it's looking like about 106 down here at the substrate. Now, I'm going to bring it back up to about what I would consider about 6 inches. I would say it's about right there. At 6 inches, it's 220. At about a foot, it's about right there. Got about 158, 160, somewhere in there. And then about, well, I guess maybe a foot would be around there. Yeah, about 155, at about a foot. Yeah, it's about a foot. And then once again down at the substrate, oops, down at the substrate, we're running, uh, let me get it out here where I can really see the light, yeah, it's up towards around 100 down at the substrate, which would be about, well, we'll take a look at that. Hang this over here. Uh, tape measure somewhere around here. I had a tape measure somewhere around here. Okay, I guess I don't have a tape measure somewhere around here. Well, this standard 55, which I think is like uh, 23 down to the bottom, so you minus about, oh, it's about three and a half inches, so it's approximately about in the area of 20 inches at the substrate right there. So 20 inches here to here, and then add another four, so we're still looking at about uh, 24, 25 inches from substrate to to the actual light itself. So. For kicks and giggles, we'll call it 24 inches, 2 feet, and 100 par down at the substrate. So that's what I'm running on this particular tank. And this is my show tank, the one that most people comment on. So for those of you who had that question, question answered. Okay, so now let's take this. Take a look at this. Okay. TDS meter. And I've had a lot of people question this, my levels. And so right now in the 55, wow, that's up. It's considerably up. Looks like about 260. 261 somewhere in there it's kind of fluttering around at about 260 wow I'm really uh, really surprised at that level um, and I'll show you why here in a minute and right here we got the pH meter and she's running about 6.5, 6.4. Yeah, about 6.5. 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4,
so definitely on the acidic side, softer, water included. And the reason that I was surprised at that level, with the flashlight here, is because this tank which the light still hadn't turned on is you'll look right there I don't know if you guys can read that with this camera but it's reading about 99 so that's less than 100 and on this one down here the 20 it's reading about 87 87 in the 20 and that's the Episto breeder tank and uh, for those of you who missed my last video um, I've got new Episto triple red fry this is a new batch of breeders that I got uh, at the cat show first of uh, February that we had so I got some new breeder I got some triple red apistos and I got over in the, one of the 10 gallons some uh, orange flash apistos and I am not sure whether they bred yet but I definitely got a batch out of the triple reds so that is the primary testings of these tanks so we got ultra soft water even even this one at 200 and something is still in the soft range very much in the soft range <coughs> ultra soft in the 20 and pretty much ultra soft in the uh, 40 breeder so I hope that'll answer a few of your questions on uh, on what my water conditions are and uh, why the plants that I have are doing as well as they are so hopefully that'll help some of you and uh, we'll go from there and once again thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon